Welcome to the Macworld Podcast. I'm Roman Loyola. On the remote is Jason Cross. Hi, Jason. Hello. In the studio with Leif Johnson. Hello. And the most important man in the room, our producer, Dan Masaoka. Good morning and welcome back, Roman. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've been on the on the podcast, so uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> so, maybe it's maybe it'll be more fun if I don't remember, so, or better if I don't remember. So, anyways, so on today's show, we're going to talk about uh, this is our last podcast for 2018. What a year! So it's been a fun year. Yeah, it's been a pretty big year. Yeah. So, but we would look forward to next year and maybe have a little bit of fun and make up stuff mm-hmm. as opposed <laughs> to what we usually do and make up stuff. And uh, we would have some predictions for 2019, what we think would happen, you know, we, mostly with Apple, but I mean, if we want to talk about tech in general, that's good too. Cause you know, like there's some stuff about 5g that maybe you want to come up with. Anyways, yeah. uh, we have some ideas of what we th- think might happen in 2019. 19 if anyone in the audience watching li- us live right now if you have any predictions f- or comments on our predictions let us know uh, the reason why dan's the most important man in the room is because he's looking for your comments and questions and your predictions for this show. yeah for no other reason than that yeah, yeah. <laughs> he also does that whole he doesn't thing. also make all this stuff work so, yes um, he also makes all this stuff work because without him we we wouldn't be live we wouldn't we would probably wouldn't even be doing the show so uh so yeah, if you guys have any comments, questions, predictions, uh, let us know what they are, and we'll talk about them on the show. So, uh, anyways, to get this started, who wants anybody wants to go first with a I, with a prediction? I think we probably all have at least some idea or prediction of the iPhone because we know there's going to be an iPhone this year, right? Yeah, there's always so, an iPhone. Yeah, so maybe we should all start with what we think, in general, the new iPhone is going to be like. Well, Lopez, right off the bat, is saying right. uh, we have two questions. What will Lopez says any update on Air Power, and <laughs> at Duncana says uh, ARM-based MacBook. I'm going uh. to take a. I'm going to say that I don't know that we'll ever we'll see Air Power uh, next next year. Uh, I don't think so. What's the over under WWDC or before after? Or I guess the over under is it before or after, or that it exists at all? <laughs> It exists, or just <laughs> or it will I, exist. I think, uh, I think it's about fifty-fifty that air power will just quietly fade into the night yes. versus actually come out. It might, they might sort of re-engineer it, make it different mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they'll make a big splash about it, like WWDC. I yeah. think it'll. That's my guess. A, is they're going to redesign it to where it's safer or whatever. But I think yeah. that's going to take more than a year to do. So, yeah. Or they may have already been doing it, but you know, I think it's about 50-50 it'll even show up this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the fact that we haven't really heard anything, no speculation, no rumors or anything. But they keep mentioning it in their like product right. packaging and stuff. Yeah. So it's not like they've just decided months ago, forget it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that it'll, it'll come out in 2020. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I'll go with that one. Yeah. So, but I don't think it'll be next year. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny. It, it's, you know, th- and then, then, you know, what'll probably happen is like TechCrunch or something will have a huge story about it's, what happened with it and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like 5,000 words on the saga of, of air power or something like that, <laughs> which will be interesting to read. You know, I'm interested to know what the problems are and what. Apple's going to do to overcome that. Yes. So, you know, it's now becoming having its own little little saga behind, on its own. I'm sure they've learned a lesson about not announcing things before they're quite ready for them <laughs> to go out. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's the the huge thing is the one thing is that Apple usually doesn't. Uh, they don't pre-announce products like that. Usually they're ready to go. Yeah, they're usually ready to go. They thought they really were pretty close. close. You're right, they because it was in all the packaging. Right. That's yes. true, they must have thought. But th- there have yeah. been a couple other instances where they pre-announced, like the Mac Pro. Mm-hmm. And But, I mean, they're, they're, those are kind of unique instances. Like, yeah. I mean, isn't, uh, I think Mac Rumors pointing out today that it's the fifth anniversary of the current Mac Pro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the most recent <laughs> Mac yes. Pro. Right. Not not the Right, right, not the, not the product 
cycle, right? The product itself, but the last time they updated it, right? Yeah, basically, it, yes. So, and I, you know, that's I would say that's a case where it's really important to get that name out there early because you know you have that's a lot of money. So people, you know, or do I want to mm -hmm. get a new unit now or do I want to wait? And I think you know, announcing it a couple. That of was years. a weird thing. They never actually went on stage uh -huh. and talked about the Mac Pro. They just kind of mentioned in interviews and stuff. Yeah, we're working on a Mac Pro. Yes. Yeah. And it's not. And they did it specifically because they had the iMac Pro coming and they didn't want people. These professional products get bought by companies who have, you know, uh, expect like uh, set amounts of money set aside for you know, purchases of equipment right, and stuff right. like that. They didn't want people thinking, oh, I shouldn't get the iMac Pro because Mac Pro is coming right away. They wanted to let everybody know, like, yeah, we're working on one. It's a new get one. that purchase it's order. Gonna yeah. adjust, but, but it's not coming this year, so don't think you're going to wait for it. <laughs> like, now, I, I do think, and this was one of the predictions that I had down, I do think that the Mac Pro will be better received than the, the last one um it almost yep. has to be because you know if they do <laughs> something just like crazy and beautiful mind you but uh you know it's it's not going to go over well that's that's going to make stock go down and everything but i, I, I had that as a prediction too like yes. wwdc they'll announce they'll actually you know unveil the new mac pro yes yeah. uh it'll ship this year uh i had it'll start at three thousand uh -huh. dollars or more sounds good do you think it'll support uh, NVIDIA stuff and you know, what you'll carry on? I, I think it's uh, – I don't think it'll come with that. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you'll be able to slap a card in or at least not right away. But I do think those things will be – it'll be upgradable in that way. So uh -huh. maybe like next year NVIDIA makes a compatible one or something like that. I think it's going to be serviceable and upgradable but not to the degree that like PC fans are used to. Yeah. Like right. way more than the current Mac Pro mm -hmm. but not – oh, just – you know take out your cpu and you know, take off your cooler and put in a new one and right. all that it's like it's not going to go to that level so back to the cheese grater kind of level where you can easily upgrade right. and add cards but the, you know and memory mm -hmm. but not and the cpu storage. yeah but the cpu yeah. is pretty much locked in there. it'll be much more in that direction and especially you know would, would, here's an interesting do you think and even cards might be limited it might be just just right. the graphics card or something and it because might of not thunderbolt be, 3 or they might just have a pcie slot for additional mm -hmm storage or controllers or something but not like five slots you know go nuts right so with the cpu do you think that'll be the first time that we see an apple chip and something no okay i didn't think so. it would not i i don't think they'll that person's question enough. about yes. mac yes. mac uh arm based, arm -based yeah. MacBook. Yeah. yeah i don't think it's coming this year uh -huh. i think it's 2020 at least and i don't think they're going to start on the highest high end mm -hmm. I, I think it'll be intel and it'll be intel's works station class stuff with ECC RAM and stuff that's right. really expensive. They're Xeons. Um, unfortunately, I'd love to see them put Threadripper in there instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be such, it's such a good fit for that product mm -hmm. and such a better like value. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a better like price performance and, and for that market where you just want lots of thread, just if it was the, whatever the Zen two generation of Threadripper is, then the, this year's Threadripper, that would be so crazy cool to put inside and that would make Mac people Pro. really pay attention to that yeah and, yeah. and to amd like that yes. would be such a win-win in both of those ways but i don't think that's what's gonna happen <laughs> that would be yeah. cool though um what about the design of it um like mctaylor on twitter is asking do you think it's stackable do you think it'll look like the old cheese grater style that would be funny if like just as a little joke at WWDC, he said, "Here's the new Mac yes. Pro, and it was the cheese grater." Oh God! <laughs> but then, like next to it is the new Mac Pro. That's like, you know, three quarters or one <laughs> one quarter the size or something like that. It was like because oh. the cheese grater is so giant. Yeah, yeah. it's too yeah. big. I don't that think that you wouldn't go back to something like notice that. like the new Mac Pro and this little svelte kind of. Yeah. Well, the old Mac Pros also used to have uh, space for four hard drives, yeah. like you know, yeah. full size hard drives, which is absolutely not necessary anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. They could easily shrink it down quite a bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to have right. a much smaller motherboard. I think it's going to be that style, like a, like a, a yeah. semi-traditional yes. tower, but it's going to be much smaller, like a mini tower. What you would, what you know, if you're familiar with the the PC, like the, the space tiki, gray. those tiki things and stuff, like, it's going to be like that kind of thing, like Falcon Northwest tiki or something, like a smaller volume. Mm -hmm. Do you right. think there will be any glass, 
Like any windows. No, no I don't think they <laughs> want you to see the inner. Well, you know, it, they went that way with the original iMac. You know, we're like, let's show you the. I don't think they would do that with a, you know, a PC. Hey, <laughs> you know, a desktop. No, I think uh, Apple's not into lights and light up stuff like that. They even got right. they got rid of the light up Apple logo on the, on the Macs. Yeah. Uh, I think they're more concerned with. Um, keeping sound and dust down and stuff like that. Yeah. So they want, don't want that transparent window and stuff. So the most important thing for me, you know, is that they're going to have to have room to put in like big graphics cars and stuff. And even if they stick with a, you know, have a, have a Vega, you know, and because that thing takes right. a lot of room. Or whatever's next, yes. you know, Navi or whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, they're going to need that. It's going to have a lot of IO. It's going to have like, probably like four Thunderbolt three ports mm -hmm. and stuff. It's going to be, you know, yeah, Definitely needs it a lot of ports, it goes without saying. But the Mac Mini gives me hope for that, that they, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that they went in that direction. So, I, you know, the fact that you still have quite a few options on that shows that yeah. they're keeping that in mind. It's going to have no GPU, and you're supposed to use an external uh, eGPU with it. <laughs> right. Um, People will be so angry. Oh, my God. You have to buy a Blackmagic <laughs> so tower to go with Apple it. would do that if they made their own. Yes. And they would sell it as, it's modular. You're meant to... To pick and choose the halves. This is a good want. thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like to get the CPU side and the graphics side that you want, and and you're meant to tie them together. You buy them together, and they're you're just being modular. Yeah. <laughs> so Dave, I don't think they're going to do that though. David uh, on YouTube and Cobra on Twitter both are asking about new AirPods. Mm. I definitely think we'll see a refresh. I just have to wonder how, you know, much of an upgrade they'll be. You know, mm -hmm. I've heard some pretty crazy things about them. But, you know, I, I do like that idea where, you know, you like, like change the volume by uh, running your finger along the side. But I don't know. I how. think that would make them pop out. Yes. I don't think they're really sturdy enough for that. Like not sturdy, but like the uh -huh. fit or two. Um, I think, yeah, I think to what you said, we'll see a refresh, but that's not a AirPods 2. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll see an AirPod that's slightly updated radios, maybe, and the wireless charging case. Mm -hmm. Right. The case comes with it, which they've announced way back when they announced AirPower. <laughs> um, I was but, almost wondering if that might be the refresh. Is that, just that could that be, yeah, that yes. could be it. Like, as far as we know, they would never come out and say, and it's got new radios. Like, it would just happen to have some refreshed internals and right? the wireless charging that was mainly what yeah I was for. the wireless charging and then a, a next gen an airpods 2 is probably coming but i think next year mm -hmm. not next year uh, 2020 2020, 2020. Yeah. yeah 2020 with right? with an actual new design and new features and hands-free siri and better water resistance and whatever else they're doing. Yeah. So what I'm more interested in, Ed, do you think we'll actually see the over ear headphones that we were talking about earlier this year? That's a good question. Yeah, that rumor yes. um I thought we might see them this year, but uh -huh. uh, I I hope so. Uh -huh. I want to see what Apple does with that. Yeah, because yeah, those it, it new wouldn't... Sonys, the WX, uh, it's a it's alphabet Sony's two. name, one thousand and three or whatever, the new Mark three versions of the Sony Bluetooth noise canceling are right. so good. They're so great, and yeah. I, I feel like that's the bar Apple needs to clear. Mm -hmm. And but, I would love to see what they do with that. Would you actually like if Sony came out with those in white? Would you want those? I I don't want big ass white. No, uh, headphones. no. I think I think the gray version they have is maybe what Apple would do. I don't think they Apple would do like gloss white, like their other. Their white stuff works if it's very subtle. Like if it's the, small, yeah. If it's yeah. small, it's but if big. you have this big white thing, no, yeah. It's not. No, yeah, not glossy white. I think they would do <laughs> something that matches. They do their slate gray colors and their mm -hmm. space black some some version of space black whatever <laughs> that is um yeah i'd love it in black i'd love it in like a matte black space black thing yeah if you're gonna have something that big it needs to be in black but uh yeah i, I am interested to see how the noise canceling and everything cancel you know works out so my guess is since we're predicting is that this springs they're going to have a spring event this year uh, and this springs uh, spring event is going to be all about media and it's going to be an airpods refresh maybe those new cans uh it's going to be where they announce their tv service and all these shows they've been making mm. uh, you know we actually get names for the shows and some release dates and we they talk about the service and uh an update to the apple tv you know software to 
push it all forward to you and stuff and something to push more apple tvs and apple tv in homes whether it's a price reduction on the 4k or a streaming stick or something something to drive apple tv hardware sales together with this service and that's what a, that's what their spring event's going to be all about it's going to be all about media maybe there's, an apple music update or something there's a prediction for me is i think apple's tv service is going to be disappointing i don't think it's going to be a flop but it's just going to be like meh. yeah i think it's going to be really tame yes like high quality but but like just NBC, like it totally well, yeah, that's, nothing with any teeth to it. That's the thing. Their content is, I don't want to say family friendly has a, has a certain connotation of like the Disney right. channel kind of, you know what I mean? But you're right. NBC kind of like. Yeah. Type. Not even basic cable, not even like <laughs> Mad Men or something, not even like, like network AMC TV or something level. like network TV level. Right. But what makes quality, all, but like, yeah. But what makes all the gets all the attention and gets all the critical acclaim yeah. are the more mature series yes. on Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. And that's and, the stuff that yeah. makes you really want to sign up for right. it. Yeah, and that's yeah. really for the most important. part, I mean, some of my favorite shows are family friendly. Like The Good Place is totally yeah. amazing and co a complete network show and stuff. But right. I don't think you could have a whole service that you're just trying to get people yeah. to subscribe to just based on a bunch of those great, yeah. you know. Right clean safe shows yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about this before in the office and i you know there are like four or five shows that seem interesting but i've seen nothing you know that really makes me you know i'll just get this this service because of this and you know like mm -hmm. you know game of thrones westworld that does hbo for me and i i have to admit i usually cancel my subscription after the season's <laughs> over but uh, but you know i will i will get those shows just you know get that service just for those shows yeah but, what's the tentpole show here that that people right. are going to all be talking about no. um and and of course not having seen any trailers or anything mm -hmm. maybe that's why sure. they don't seem so you know maybe whatever the um maybe the amazing stories update is that for people you know maybe everyone's talking about that the next time who knows i want yeah. to be interested in that but i'm not even that interested in that so <laughs> david is asking do you think that they came into the content market too late mm -mm. no no I, there's, no, there's a lot of shaking room. up going on right now so yeah it takes time. It's gonna. It's not like they're gonna kill Netflix mm -hmm. ever, and and it's not like they're gonna just rocket to number like rocket up the thing instantly. Yeah. It, it would be too late. But they have time to build it. Yeah. yeah if it would be too late at, if Apple didn't have an installed base of Apple TV. Yes. But they have. But and customers iPhones have, and iPads right. and all that stuff. You know. People have these products, so it's it's not too late because there's millions of these products out there. And so. since we were just talking about sound just a second ago. We do have a giveaway. Mm -hmm. right. Now might be a good time to. That's a good that. point. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, starting Friday, we have a giveaway, and what well, this giveaway will be for it is for the Bose Build headphones. Now, these are Bose headphones, but uh, you actually have to build them yourself. So these are actually meant for kids, and I believe it's from eight to eighteen is uh, what, what it's good for. But Dan did a video the other yeah. day where I uh, checked him out. I tried them out. out. So yeah, this is his his pair. He put a pair together, and so you know these all come in their component parts. But, uh, you know, talking them together, there's an app that you can use, to, you know, that kind of shows the process of putting them together. And if you, uh, they even have little, you, you can switch out these and these designs and you can put whatever designs you want in there. They light up. And so it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of novel. I actually haven't been able to hear how they sound, but, you know, it's both. Yeah, yeah, they, they oh, sound both. all right. right. Uh, yeah. And then, like, you know, the iOS app is kind of an educational uh, kit. So it's, you learn about how sound works. Um, it, it's all pretty basic, so it's not like you now know how to make a pair of headphones. You know how to kind of, you know, assemble it in a, in a factory, maybe. I was going to say, yeah, you know how to be a factory worker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the lesson. But it's more about kind of how sound works. So yeah. we are giving that away on Friday, and it'll run for two weeks. For two weeks. Yeah. And, yeah, I'll be running the video on kind of, you know, my experience with them. Yeah. And I forget how much this normally costs. It's like 170 150 150 okay. So, yeah, so this is normally a $150 value. So, oh, and it only works with uh, iPhone. Yes. iOS so, so devices. It only works with iOS yeah. devices. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, so if you, you know, if your kid had like an Android or something new, you don't want well, to. Just to clarify, yeah. So the app and the assembly, yeah, is on iOS devices. Once it's assembled, can you connect them to like your 
Does it use Bluetooth? It's Bluetooth, so I think so you then, can then use okay, it. Okay, so yeah. I was wondering yeah. when right. I saw that. Okay. So then you can connect them to other Bluetooth yeah. devices. Yeah, and it has an eighth inch jack, so you okay. could just use okay. it as you know, okay. even a wired. You so know? the assembly, the the, the and, assembly and requires the an iOS yeah. device. Yeah. But afterwards, you can use them with any Correct. other yeah. Bluetooth or yeah. headphone jack. Yeah. So cool. Um. There are a couple uh, other ones. Do you think an iPod Touch uh, will come out? And that's uh, Brown Man on YouTube. So when did the i? When was the iPod Touch last updated? Was it? Seven I want to say years. three years ago. Yeah, but, that sounds about right. People have basically I think forgotten. It's, about I think that. they're done. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so as a question. I get maybe the question is, will the iPod disappear from Apple's lineup next year? We've reached a point where, you know, it's not only the iPhone, you know, there's Android devices. Everybody basically has a player already. I, you know, it's, you know, it's getting harder and harder to justify the reason. The best reason I, I've heard is for people who have like restaurants or something and they, you know, this is like the music device and that's a very specialized. There's device. yeah part of, I think part of the problem is that it, they used to be basically, here's the iPhone without the cellular stuff in it. Yeah. And when mm-hmm. iPhones were, were cheaper Doing that would would get you down to something that's like an iPod type price, and now they don't. Like right. when your cheapest new iPhone is seven or fifty bucks, uh-huh. like what are you gonna have a five hundred and fifty dollar iPod? Like that's not. Here's something that so just I came think to that's me. Part of it. There's something that just came to me is when the iPod was popular and everything, we typically down bought and downloaded our music. Mm-hmm. Now everything is just streaming and stuff, and I believe that also mm-hmm. makes it really difficult to justify having like a separate. Yeah. yeah. So I would think the i iPod touches are dead, with the exception of if they decide, boy, you know, for India and stuff, we really need a cheaper iPhone. We really need an iPhone SE two or something, mm-hmm. and they decide to do that then maybe an iPod Touch that becomes the cheaper version of that is justified by their streaming video service and stuff. Like, here's another way you can do that. Here's something you can put this, you can get this for your kids, put it in their hands, you know, right. you don't have to worry about them using your cell and just, so so maybe, but I think they need to make a much cheaper iPhone <laughs> before they can then make an even cheaper iPod Touch out of it. That's a good point. And I don't think that's coming. Yeah. So I think it's gone. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it disappears. I'll say like sometime after WWDC. Yeah. It's like yeah, it suddenly just, it's just, not on the website. Anymore. Suddenly not on the website. Yeah. Yeah. And then so. everybody discovers and writes an obituary. For right. <laughs> everybody talks about how great the iPod was and all these yeah, and the whole <laughs> transition of the iPod yeah. over time. Yeah. So I was going to make a crack about how, you know, it'd be too expensive to have one with Face ID. But did you see the uh, the rumor this morning with the, the patent that was approved like a year ago that, you know, Touch ID might be coming back to the iPhone, but then we have like both Face ID and Touch ID on there? What do you think about that? Like in a future yeah, phone? I, I mean, Apple has a million patents that they don't necessarily pursue. But it's a, yeah. but it's an idea. I mean, you know, if it were an It is an idea, but I don't thing, think yeah. they have any interest in doing both. Um and I think that just confuses people more than anything. Sometimes I and think, I think people also, have been interested in getting the iPhones because they don't like Face ID as much. Yeah, the newer ones. But I, I don't. I, I don't think that's the issue at all. Okay. I think it's just price. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you'll find a person who says that, but I think overall that's not putting a dent in iPhone sales. Got it. But also in these patent applications, like sometimes they use icons of things like a thumbprint to mean you know, biometric identification and not necessarily literally a thumbprint. They use like, I, you know, drawings that are not indicative of the actual. Right, it's an artist thing. representation. representation yeah. But the, the, the same thing had something about face ID on like a watch and stuff. And, and they don't have room for any kind of true depth module on a watch anytime soon. You know, a lot of times, a lot of this stuff is like, we had an idea, we're going to patent it and lock this down just for in the case. future. And then, yeah. and then they don't, it never becomes a product. I think this might be one of those things that never becomes a product. So Rubbish makes a comment that, you know, they wish that there's a new iPod Touch because iPhones are way too expensive. And there was a mm-hmm. comment earlier on YouTube about, do you think that there will be cheaper iPhones? Well, yeah, there was a, was a report today. Was it a Bloomberg report about the, you, you talked about the, the sales in India. Yeah. About how people in India don't buy it's the phones, biggest so. like sort of growing market. Yeah, it's the biggest market, and Apple phones. has no penetration in it. And so. something I they claimed something like 
this year has they've shipped half as many phones as last year into, yeah. to India, um, which I couldn't believe. Yeah, everything's super expensive now. The SE is basically dead. Like, right. what is what's what is there for India? Um, and in, their strategy in India seemed to be like, well, people want to buy cheaper phones, and, and Apple's strategy seems to be, but what if we did marketing that told them to buy our expensive phones? Yes. Like, and that's that right. seems to be their whole strategy, and it's really flopped. Yeah, as far as we can tell. Again, they like they don't break down geographically, but third party data, whatever. Yes. So, yeah. Do that. The, the question is, do they do they go? Gee, we really do need a cheaper phone for certain parts of the world, at least. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. do they? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think we might see an SE too. So, but I think yeah, Apple needs to do something. It seems it feels like they need to do something with that particular phone, yeah. in order to kind of make it feel like there was a reason why it was it was absent for a year. Does I don't know if that makes sense because Apple's mm-hmm. history is not to bring back products mm-hmm. that they've kind of. Put the bed. Yeah, and they're trying so. to get away from that whole form factor. Yeah, whole screen yeah, that form, form factor. factor has to be over. But do you think it's just like a rebranded iPhone Seven or something? You know? Yeah, uh-huh. it, it's either that or there. The, I don't. Maybe the iPhone Ten R really isn't that expensive to to do. Mm-hmm. That whatever succeeds the iPhone Ten R mm-hmm. is a five hundred dollar phone. You know, and not a seven hundred dollar mm-hmm. phone. Yeah. Um. It could be something along those lines. But yeah, I, I think Apple, if Apple, they've never chased market share that much, but I do right. think they're worried about the size of their ecosystem. Yes. Yeah. Which you, uh, if they're going to be a big services company, mm-hmm. you you have to have people in that. You can't sell services to people who don't have your hardware right. if, mm-hmm. in, in Apple's walled garden universe. So they really need to get iPhones into people's hands in these emerging markets somewhat yes. <laughs> more than they are. And lower costs is definitely going to be the way to do that. And I, I have to admit, like even among people I know, um, I'm seeing like an alarming <laughs> uh, trend of people saying, you know, oh, I gave up my iPhone for my, aunt, you know, for Pixel. You know, give me some advice, guys. And, you know, one or two people was like, well, I've seen a lot of people doing that. So, you know, that that's one thing that worries me too. Yeah, I really wonder if... Um, we, this last year was weird where they got rid of the iPhone 10 from last year mm-hmm. instead of selling it at a lower price because of the 10s and 10r and everything but normally that's the thing you take they take yeah. this year's iPhone they keep selling it next year i wonder if the iPhone 10r when these year's iPhones come out they keep selling the iPhone 10r and that becomes a really lower priced like they drop a $200 yes and it becomes you know the, that's their answer for these emerging mm. markets. It's still a premium phone for them, but it's, you know, a four or fifty or five hundred dollar phone and not that expensive. Yeah. So that, I, you have to wonder. Yeah, the ten R kind of fills that slot. So like next year we probably won't we'll probably see the same thing in terms of like mm-hmm. what happened with the iPhone ten. The ten S will probably just drop. Mm-hmm. It it won't it won't be there anymore. They'll replace whatever the new whatever they're gonna call the new ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 10t i don't know it's just that comes after <laughs> s but but you know and then that 10s is gone and then the 10r excuse me whatever new generation upgrades they make to that it fills that void of the affordable that that slot right but they keep selling the 10r cheaper and and more than the normal hundred dollars they knock off the price maybe that's their answer for emerging markets is we keep selling the 10r for a lot yeah. less than we used to yeah. And since we're talking about kind of iPhones, what are the chances, and Ryan's asking this from YouTube, that it moves to USB-C? That was one of my original, that, that was one of the big ones that I have. I do believe that we will see a USB-C iPhone next year. I, I 100% believe that. I think at the very least, mm-hmm. it'll be USB-C on the plug end. Mm-hmm. Like it'll have lightning on one side and the other side will be USB-C. Fair enough. To, instead of USB A to match like the current lineup of of Macs, yeah, but yeah, no more USB stuff like that. That at the very least, but I would really hope that they're going USB C on the iPhone end. 
that it's just a USB C. Yeah. Because especially you know with micro USB and everything, you know we're getting too many connections here, and I, you know I think that would be something really nice with you know Apple. If gee, I need to like charge up my phone to my Mac, you know, like, ooh, look at there, a USB C to USB C cable, boom, I mm -hmm. can do it. You know, and that, that would make it so convincing, and you know it'd also help people get into the ecosystem better. But you know, I, I think there's you know currently with those connections, there's already too much fragmentation and seeing more uniformity across the board would be yeah nice. i would have thought the whole ios thing would just stay lightning but mm -hmm. then when they did the ipad pro as usb c this year i thought well i mean if they're willing to do that mm -hmm. then they should just make the whole ios ecosystem usb c they yes. should it'll take a two years yeah. to transition it because they keep selling older phones and stuff like that but they should get it there you know and I think it's moves like that so that's going to take, you know, because Apple has been pushing this USB-C as the future. And I think it's going to take moves like this to convince people to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, once it's something like to use every day in your hand, you know, you'll see the, you know, convenience of it. And so what do you give the odds that that'll happen Oh, I, I'm, on the iPhone? I believe it's about 90%. Yeah. I mean, okay. You know, you know. I don't think it's going to happen. You don't? No. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's, it's, it's too lucrative right now for them to keep that port. Well, it gives them a certain amount of control. The licensing of Lightning gives them a certain amount of control over not letting just anybody make any old garbage that you plug in. It doesn't right. work right. Yeah. And I think they're worried about that. Um, but then they did it on the iPad, and so that's, you know, I guess all bets are off. But I think I, it's more like there's a 75% chance that it it just goes USB-C on the plug end, mm -hmm. on, the, on the, you know, power outlet right. at other end, and it's still Lightning. And then there's maybe a 25% chance that it's actually USB-C on the phone end. Mm -hmm. But I think one of those things is going to happen. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. On the laptops, I think it makes sense because there's so many kind of accessories and stuff that's moving away from type A. Mm -hmm. So that the, And there's no alternative that, you know, no one's really using, you know, Thunderbolt in that regard. So it made sense mm -hmm. there, but... Yeah, no, it's 10 yeah. different about just plugging in stuff and having it third party stuff and having it work and everything anyway it's yeah. it's a whole different market in terms of people's expectations and stuff yeah. but i i i'm pretty sure especially with the ipad to me that was like the clincher and uh yeah, yeah. i think it's going in that direction and jason on youtube is asking about displays mm -hmm. like mm. a new cinema display they announced yeah. they're making a new display mm -hmm. and said nothing yes. else about it so the uh, and uh, one would assume that it's going to launch with the Mac Pro. Yes. Yeah. At yeah. WWDC probably. Yeah. 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 So, I would guess at WWDC. Yeah. I think that's going to be the highlight. Yeah. And I, my prediction for what it is is it's going to be the IMAX display. It's going to be 5K, uh, DCI-P3 color gamut, 60 inch. hertz, no variable refresh rate. I want them to do variable refresh rate and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe HDR. That'd be great. But I don't. My guess is that they won't. They'll just take that same panel they made for the latest IMAX, which is nice, mm -hmm. and right. put that in a slimmer shell for a yeah. display, Thunderbolt port. So what At else? At least yeah. do HDR, because all those video editors and stuff. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Let's see. Exactly. Let's see. What were you going to so say? So we've covered a lot already, and yeah. we're only halfway what through the show. What have we missed? Show. So we've already talked about air air power, iPhones, iPod even. What uh, about iOS? What do you think iOS is going to do this year? I was trying to think about that on the Uber over here. And I don't know. The, one of the best things I could come up with is that I do think we'll be able to see better compatibility with iOS and macOS. I don't know how that's going to work. But uh, I do think they're going to go more in that direction because we saw some steps toward it this year. So I, I forget. Did they say that iOS 12 was more of a maintenance release like apple, a tune up to ios 11 apple did they say that never use that never term well yes. but they kind of they well, yeah I, i'm kind of like generalizing like yeah. when they say when uh i forget was it high sierra was more of a tune up to sierra uh -huh. yeah or something to that to that effect what they they didn't outright say it's just a tune up but they basically just said we're fine you know we're we're yeah. uh They've done that on Mac OS, but on iOS, they right. always talk about how oh, this is the newest, greatest, amazingest so, thing yes. ever, and it's a big change. A lot of, a lot of like, you know, Mark Gurman and stuff like that, those the guys said, yeah, they, they delayed a bunch of important things to make this more of a maintenance release and less of a, right. you know, so they've used those terms. And I feel, I mean, obviously, 
with the exception of kind of making gestures work a little bit better uh -huh. for the phones with no home button, it's mostly the same. They just nice. fixed a lot of stuff that people have been complaining about forever. Like, oh my God, notifications are a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they, yeah, it was bigger the... than a maintenance release, but because iOS 11 was kind of a mess. Uh -huh. Yes. So, but so iOS 12 was a whole lot more stable, but also had a lot of big features. So I think we'll see a huge Siri upgrade uh -huh. in WWDC. We, yeah, or... I was really hoping for one this year. And, yeah. And we didn't get it. We got Siri shortcuts, which is a different thing. Uh -huh. Right. But it's not Siri's inherent abilities getting better. Yeah. So I think we'll see that. And I think it's really time for an update to how. Apple handles the home screen. They really haven't done anything in that since like iOS was it nine or something. Yeah, that's been a big kind of issue. Now, with, with yeah, now that they now that the phones are now that they're gonna have a couple years where the phones with no home button and the taller display and stuff, it's time to kind of rethink the home screen a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see more fundamental UI changes this year than we did last year. Are they gonna call it iOS thirteen? Coming here. I yeah, yeah. that's a good thing. yeah like because of the bad luck thing uh, i don't know if it's think, necessarily bad luck they, but it just I, doesn't it doesn't ring you know what i mean it's yeah 13 and it, well after thir you know when you get to the teens it's kind of ios 14 True. 15 it's just, just would they would they give it a name like they do mojave and all that stuff would they give it some i've been thinking that in the past california yeah. lakes or <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, ios Folsom, uh, right. ios cupertino yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah. Well, one thing I'm thinking as uh, you know, we had that I had that capture article we published on Monday. Um, I, you know, do you think I think 2020 is when we'll see it. But when you see something like a true depth sensor on the rear camera on the iPhone. Yeah, I think that's not coming until 2020 where they have a real like um, the lasers or, or time of flight system or something like that. Yes. Something that's not just multiple cameras. Yes. <clears throat> I think they may do the three camera thing, uh -huh. but I don't, I think it'll all still just be cameras and I think AR will get better, uh -huh. but it doesn't have its killer app. No, it doesn't have its, and, and <clears throat> those things could be apps we already have. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day about how the iPhone from a hardware standpoint didn't, do things that's like, oh, nobody's done this before. It was right. all the software, right? Mm -hmm. So software yeah. and the killer app that made everybody have to get an iPhone were apps that we had on phones. They just worked in a completely different and better way. Like at Google Maps on that thing was a revelation. Yes, it was. Getting your voicemail with visual voicemail, like they just cha completely changed what people expect yeah. from getting their voice. You had to dial in to your voicemail and like listen <laughs> to it mm. before that. And then like iPhone changed all that. Uh, so I think that that might be the AR thing that might be when when they build it into maps or your something, something you already do on your phone, your dialer, your iMessage, something that there'll be some FaceTime. I don't know, but they'll build something AR into something we all kind yeah. of use every day and and just elevate the experience mm -hmm. to this whole new level. And then that'll be the thing that makes everybody suddenly really care about AR. Yes. Yeah. And that maybe that'll come with I, with the new version of iOS and the new phones. Mm -hmm. I hope they're thinking about that. Right now they're building all the the building blocks, the AR kit stuff and everything, but nothing's none of these apps, they're all kind of toys. Yes, they are. They're just like, oh, that's neat. And that's about all you can say. But I, I do, you know, I've said this before, I do see the potential of AR more than VR. And, uh, you know, mm. for using things like, you know, it's kind of like I try to say, like, you know, let's see what this looks like here. Or let's see. You know, it's simple stuff. But if it's if the technology is strong enough behind it, you know, yeah. it could be really revolutionary once it gets to that point. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, seeing your family member that you're talking to in mm -hmm. your living room. You know, yes, that's, that's going away as, as a thought. having a phone conversation, a FaceTime thing, but instead of it being a video of them there, uh -huh. it's, a, it's it's a 3D representation of them here. Like, you know, that that kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff that they need to do to get several hundred million people to have to run out and get it, you know. Yes. And that would that would be, you know that's one of those things where that would be cool you know as opposed to is it really useful or something but it would really make people say you know yeah, yeah it's a I wow moment it's, yes it's a wow moment it's a wow moment that people could use every day instead of just going like oh that's what that ikea chair would look like if i put it in my living room yes. you know i'm just mm -hmm. imagining the janky version that it's <laughs> going to end up being where it's like oh yes. here's my here's my mom sitting on the couch who's 
definitely not sitting on it in the right way, yeah. is c- incorrectly sized, <laughs> um, and I still am just looking at the screen. This is pointless. And clipping yeah, the cushion. like the, you know, there's, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of, like, that's why nobody's done any of this and made it work, because there's a million issues to work through. Yeah. Yes. And I think it has like, the most potential in maps. Yeah, and, that's and true. Navigation yeah. and pointing you where you need to go and saying putting signage of like here's the here's the thing you're looking right. for. Here's Sadly, another Google's thing that's already doing that you basically. Yeah. Care about. Yeah. yeah, Google's been working on that for quite a while, which which mm-hmm. kind of makes me wonder is like is I I I can see the promise of it, mm-hmm. but is there enough promise in it that it's worth how much it's going to cost to develop? Yeah, it's so much not there right. yet, right? Yes. right? And and to get it there is an, a huge leap, and like you said, in in cost and difficulty to get it to where it needs to be, to where everybody wants to look at their phone while they're walking around or something like that, to you know look at the AR representation of the world. It's, um, everything so far is just seems like a novelty in AR, and you know the the best example I can give, you know, it's not a very practical example. It's like Pokemon Go, you know, where you can, you know, you know, make it look like oh, you're actually looking for. It. Yeah, this is cute for one time or something, but it's really time consuming. It takes like two minutes, whereas normally you just like flip it open and just throw balls at the creature. Yeah, after doing that for a few times, you just turn off the AR mode because it's slower. <laughs> right. What I what I think they need to add is a, a walking mode. Uh-huh. So that like it kind of utilizes your camera, so you, and it'll have like a li- you know little picture in picture, and mm-hmm. then this way you can see kind of in front of you and behind you while you're using your phone uh-huh. and you're walking, so you don't crash into people. <laughs> and then you know it might have alerts or like you know oh it's like someone's coming and it'll have like a little red light, you know, just be like oh you're about to crash into someone. Uh, You've got you're walking around with your phone up in front of your face. Yeah, so just using okay. utilizing all the sensors. <laughs> One thing I'm wondering, do you think there will be any kind of pushback with the stuff that Apple is doing with the Apple Watch, you know, um, with the atrial defibrillation and the, you know, the fall? You, you think people will say that it's not, you know, I, that's one thing I'm worried because you're getting into that medical lawsuit territory. And, mm. you know, we, we it's brand new still technically, but, you know, I have to wonder if we'll start seeing more things like that later yeah on. i almost guarantee someone's going to try and sue them or some yeah. false positive even though and there's they're, probably and they're, someone working on a lawsuit right now yeah that it's not gonna, been revealed yet it's totally so. not going to go anywhere because apple's legal language about how this is not a medical device and you yes. shouldn't trust it for that and all this was like was already airtight mm-hmm. but they'll sue anyone i mean they just i they was just news about the lawsuit where somebody tried to sue apple because they were distracted by a FaceTime call, right. and got in an accident in their car, and of course it was dismissed. Yes, but they tried. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> like yes, yes, you can't be on FaceTime and drive. That's your fault, not Apple's fault. <laughs> but they tried to sue Apple about it. So there'll be a suit, but I, I don't think there'll be broad pushback from consumers. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think consumers are going to be like, no, I don't want these. They're intrusive or they're there are too many false positives or anything. I think Apple's been really conservative about um, about that and about how often they kick up warnings and stuff. Mm-hmm. As popular as it is and as connected to this community as we are, I don't hear stories from people like all getting frustrated about how it constantly tells them they've got a, right. you know, elevated heart rate or anything like that. Usually we hear stories about like, oh, they warned me and I checked it out and oh my God, yes. I had a real problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> So, so we're gonna we're hearing about lives being saved, and we're not hearing about people being yeah. annoyed about it. So that's a good point. So, but what about Apple Series Watch, Apple Watch Series Five? So what would it be an incremental upgrade to four? And yeah, I think it's we, an S year. Yeah, and are we gonna see like an upgrade pattern like with the iPhone, where like the Series Four kind of just drops off, and you keep the Series Three as the low cost one, and then the Series yep. Five is the new one? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think everything after Series 3 is going to – this year, this coming year, 2019, they'll stop selling everything below the 3. Right. And they'll sell the 3 as the, the, the super cheap thing, and then the 4, and the new one will be the 5, and the 5 will be expensive. And it'll look like the 4. It'll just have, like, a better processor right. and better, I don't know, microphones or something. But it's not going to be, like, a the big update the 4 was. The 4 was, like, a huge yeah. overhaul. I think it's going to be like three years before we see one of those yeah. again. Yeah. 
they're right. working on some cool stuff. We assume based on companies they're buying and reach patents they're doing and stuff with like micro display and everything, which would be really awesome on the watch. Yeah. It's it's micro LEDs, which would be like OLED, but even better and even brighter and even more like way more battery efficient and stuff like that. But yeah. getting color micro LEDs at that size that you can manufacture in the hundreds of millions, it's not, it's not there. It's going to be a little while yet. <laughs> So That'll I'm, be the next big change. So I'm curious, as far as kind of of what is likely to come out next year, what are you most anticipating? Mac Pro. Yep. I think Mac Pro is going to be the most. I, it's not for me because I'm not rich. Mm -hmm. It's been hyped <laughs> up for three years. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, more. It's, pent up, it's pent up excitement for that. I really want to see what they do. Exactly. I think that's the most exciting sort of new I will never be able to afford one either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say I'm I'm interested in seeing what happens with the HomePod because okay, it does it does it evolve or is it still just a fancy speaker? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's if and and WWDC will tell a lot as to what's happening with HomePod because if they show up with Siri enhancements, of course that will be demoed using a HomePod. And mm -hmm. maybe HomePod will be closer to being a digital assistant to compete with all the other products. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see what happens with that particular product. Because if nothing happens, then that product is basically dead. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's only so many people who just want a really good voice-activated speaker yeah. for Apple Music. Like, yeah. It really needs to broaden its appeal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that fits into what I think is going to be most exciting for me is the software updates, iOS 13, maybe the yeah. next Mac OS, like the next, next Mac OS, I think is really going to push what Leif said, that integration of iOS. And we we have those four iOS apps from Apple that run on Mac OS. They're going to get better at that uh, and open that up to developers so that they're not technically iOS apps, but they use the same framework, so they're easy to port. Right. And they I introduced think we're gonna... that at WWDC. Yeah, they talked yeah, about that. Yeah, and said it's yeah. coming. It's going to take some time. We're going to do it first with our own apps. Right. I think they're going to really accelerate that in the next version of Mac OS. Yeah. Um, and it would be great if they brought the stores together, if yeah. they let consumers purchase one app one time for both right. for see that's so time. annoying because you, that is a major part of my workflow is uh mm -hmm. you know you're working you know especially as a journalist you know i can type up notes on something you know in like ia writer or notability and then boom i can go over to you know my mac and there they are that's beautiful and i but mm -hmm. the thing is is like jason pointed out i have to buy two separate apps for that so yeah. i have to buy ia writer on both the uh you know the the iPhone and the Mac, and the same with Notability, and the same with a lot of other stuff, and it's annoying. And they could still let that be an option for developers, just like they do with the iPad. Yes. Some developers sell a separate iPad app of their app, and it's cost different and stuff. Yes. And some just you buy the app, and it's for iPhone and iPad and Watch and whatever. So give them that option, but put put the bring the stores together. And it seems like they're doing that because if you look at the design of the Mac App Store. Mm -hmm. In Mojave, it it's starting to look like the iOS App Store in the sense that they have all this editorial content and you know the way it's categorized and everything. I if feel I feel like they're trying to do that. If y'all don't know that, yeah, that, that there is like, like like Jason said, there's also an, also a big price difference. You buy one app and it basically functions entirely the same on iOS, so it'll be like nine bucks. You get it on Mac, yeah. it's like fifty bucks. So yeah. things <laughs> things which is an incredibly great yes. task manager That's app it. is the worst offender because mm -hmm. it's it's ten bucks on iPhone <laughs> and you get Apple Watch with that, which is a expensive for these kind of productivity apps but it's worth it because it's great yes but then they have a separate ipad app and that's 20 bucks and then they have a separate mac app and it's 50 bucks yes and it's 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 crazy. and that's a lot yes. and i could i would much rather just spend 29.99 and get it on all i would buy it yes. more if i could get it everywhere for 29.99 that's a good point yes <clears throat> and so I don't, I don't, I think you should pay for good software. I don't have any problem with that. Mm. Uh, but some, the split is driving me nuts. 
and that that is one he, the idea to actually shell out for things and it goes back to what i said you know get, get, you know having being able to look at it on my iphone and also being able to get it on my mac when i look at work yeah and so that's a significant investment <laughs> yeah once it's all done with it yeah yeah Dan, was there a particular product uh, you were? I, I, I mean, I, I think I'm on board. I'm, you know, coming from the video production side, the Mac <laughs> Pro has always been so important. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I've now switched to, you know, a custom PC on that regards. But I'm just curious to see, like, you know, yeah. you know, a lot of people I think have made the switch because uh, of of what the Mac Pro has been the last yeah. however many years. That I'm curious to see if they can come up with a product that's gonna win people's hearts back yeah i think it would really help if in addition to doing the mac pro and of course a new version of uh, updates to final cut and stuff if they put final cut on the ipad i think a lot of people who've kind of gone like well i can do premiere on a pc and whatever i think a lot of people would kind of win be one back to final cut and a mac if they knew, you know, especially given what the Mac, the iPad Pro is now, if they had sort of a version of it there where they could do some stuff there and then they could go back to their Mac and finish on Final Cut there. Like, I think that would be a big deal for them. I think the media is too hard because, like, you know, I played around with Premiere Rush, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. tries to do, you know, a lot right. of stuff cloud based. But it's like, you know, we're dealing with gigs yes. and gigs of footage and, you know, our templates for projects alone, you know, already a few gigs that you're it's it doesn't. I don't. Yeah, I don't see. You wouldn't it. be able to do it just in the cloud. It'd have to be like, well, we have local here, and then essentially using what it's what's like AirDrop. We're gonna. Be, right. It's a Mac, and you and it's your Mac, and you can just like instantly move your data there on the local network, not over the internet, not over the cloud. You know that kind of stuff. They'd have to come up with a solution, like you said, and of course, since iPad Pros are USB C, maybe it's just you plug your iPad Pro in it into there and you start working in final cut and while it's background transferring all your data over i don't know but i think apple is uniquely positioned because of their ecosystem because of the way that they have everything locked and can do stuff together to solve that problem in a way others can't yes yeah i i think ultimately though the market for people who are going to edit on an ios device Mm-hmm. is going to be a very different set than the one who wants to edit in a much more complex project, probably on an actual you know desktop machine. So mm-hmm. I feel like they're just better off not even dealing with that and just saying, here's the product for you, and here's a different you know product for you. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, see these, from I see these videos of real, like, so pro video editors, not not people making movies, but people making... You know, like the high, high quality YouTube content and stuff who have tried the new iPad Pro as a video editing system with a third party apps and stuff. And they're all kind of freaking out at how surprised they are at how good it is once they, you know, get used to the idea that, oh, well, I got to put all my media on here. But then they can do a, they can do everything. Yes. They feel like, wow, I didn't think I could, could do everything. And it's so fast. And I'm really surprised. So I think there's a, I think there's a market there that maybe a lot of people don't know that they want yet. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it's just a matter of like, how do you make that work with, like you said, media being so big for video. How do you make that all flow together without giving everybody gigabit Ethernet? <laughs> exactly. And I, but I will also, it's like imagine using uh, your your desktop computer with only your your mouse. Yeah. I use so many hotkeys mm-hmm. that it's. It's like anyone who can say that you don't need a keyboard mm-hmm. uh, and edits, I'll be like, no, nope, sorry, you're not, you're not editing. Oh, they're like, using you know, keyboards. With the, keyboards for iPads. I would say they, most they people use you that the keyboard iPad cover. Keyboard. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, m- m- so many people use iPads with keyboards. Yeah. The Pro, anyways, like, yes. yeah, it's almost. I imagine that that sell through on that keyboard is pretty high. Yeah. At that point, then I don't really see what like i don't i don't see the benefit of of having you know you you're you're adding all these accessories now to the ipad that you might as well have just been on a desktop in the first place because you need a desk and that's what i was saying in my review right. yeah so there is that it's it's the portability it's it's doing that on a plane <laughs> but you're not what? but then you're not having a keyboard 
No, it's it's the keyboard's your cover. It's the cover so of So then the, you should just have a I, MacBook. I'm sure they want to sell you a MacBook. As Honestly, well. I'm lifting yeah. <laughs> for work, yes. I am. Yeah. 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 But sure, I would love a touchscreen laptop. I'll I'll take that. Yeah. I don't think Apple's gonna do it. But I, I could see what I agree. what what could be doing is you know, because they introduced this framework at WWDC and as a uh, technology demonstration, mm -hmm. they showed that they could, I don't want to say reconstruct, but they basically made Final Cut for iPad using this framework. Mm -hmm. So that, as an example, and then they were like, oh, it's good enough to release. So I could see that that kind of, you know, yeah, how, I mean, how, it, how, yeah. how it came to be in terms, and, and, and how it comes to be instead of Let's address these workflows. Do you know what I mean? That's how they approached the project. Instead of like, we need to address these different workflows. It may have been like, here's a technology demonstration that we're going to see if we, that we can make work. Oh, I so. think as as excited as they were about iPad, I uh, mean iPad, Photoshop on the iPad, mm -hmm. you know, um, and and that coming. I mean, that falls into the same category of. Right. Oh, but everyone needs a keyboard and everyone needs to like real people who really use this need all these things. And then, you know, but they're still really excited about it because they're really excited about the idea that the iPad is a real thing that does real work for people. Yeah. Um, I, but with Photoshop, yeah. I might even argue that it's the better method because yeah. like people are already using Wacoms so that they can see what they're drawing on. Mm -hmm. And Apple has not had a product like that. So I'm not zero shocked at all that a, a Photoshop option, you know, that can work with a, a, a screen and a pen mm -hmm. makes that's just absolute sense. It's, it's a much I, I just think that video. regardless of whether or not it's really an uh, an optimal solution for people to have Final Cut on an iPad, uh, Apple may want to do it because they really want to show that the iPad Pro is a real workhorse that does real, like professional work for real people. Whether or not it's something people really need, yeah, um, yeah. I and, mean, and I think honestly, like you know, I see all these video editors who are completely skeptical, uh, skeptical about editing on an iPad, who try it, and they're kind of like, "Wow, uh, I'm I'm shocked. This is great." A years years ago, there was this like one series where they kind of tested like high end video cameras against like, and and the iPhone was in there, and it's like you can come up with great looking footage. But then the amount of work that you need to do to light the thing, to do post production, and you you can do great stuff. It's just like all the other work that goes into it is mm -hmm. underestimated. So it's like yes, you can probably edit a great looking video, but how much less efficient it is at doing it and just yeah. the workflow style. It's like no, you're you, you would not do this. But can it? Sure, if you want to take three times the amount of time, <laughs> you can. But it's like that's not what I want to do. Okay, that's just my that's that's I, that's, I mean, that's, that's just not the experience that I'm not a professional video editor, but when I see the the videos of people who try this online, that's exactly the thing that they thought this is going to take forever. Yeah, it's going to be and like who they're are they? blown away. They're like, "Holy cows, this really isn't." Yeah. I mean, there's some new shortcuts to learn because it's not Premiere. You know, it's it's a different third party app and stuff. But it's like, wow, this is this is right. yeah. incredibly fast. It's working really really well. Uh, I'm surprised that I can really do real edits on here the way that I want to and the speed that I want to. So I, I, I want to see. see these products. Send, send me those videos because I, <laughs> I, I got to see it. Is it Jonathan, I forget his last name, but he, he's a guy who does a lot of Apple. Is it Morrison? It might be John. Is it Jonathan He does Morrison? a lot of, he does stuff on the um he does um, a lot of Apple MacBooks. stuff. MacBooks. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it, I think Jonathan Morrison made a video that's it's basically him showing him editing a video on an iPad. Yeah, I think he so, did, and it's like, oh, you can do stuff. And he and was kind of surprised at how well he was able to. But that do doesn't it work, like, so. and then be like, okay, now, now, now. Now we're not saying this yeah. is going to be the primary <laughs> platform. We're just saying that this is going to be an option that people are going to be able to to do now. It's and if anything, I think Jason was trying to point out it's an example of the horsepower that the iPad has now. Mm -hmm. That it's got some serious horsepower and it can and, do and these just the things. product positioning. Yeah, the idea of it being you know yeah. oh this is for pros. So yeah, yeah. They Whether gotta get, it's the they optimal, gotta get, at least Apple's pro software has to get on their pro platform. Yeah. So, 
All right. Anyways, <laughs> are there any other uh, <laughs> predictions that people want to want to voice before uh, that we haven't touched? Like, I was gonna. I, I think that Apple's gonna up the five gigabyte free tier, and I think they're gonna. Oh up it to God. I think they're going to up it to 50 gigabytes. <laughs> they should, but I don't so, know if for I free. fully agree with that. For free. I, that's the, free that's, gonna, storage, uh, that's yeah. the prediction I'm going to make, is that they're going to announce that I, uh, the free iCloud here is now going to be upgraded to 50 gigs instead of 5. I well, want 50 to would be that. great. Um, <laughs> what if it's just 10? <laughs> if it's just 10. <laughs> so. I, I kind of feel like it doesn't. the solution they need to come up with is not that they need to give you X amount of free space. Five is right. fine. They just need to make it so that backups of your iOS devices don't count. Yes. 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 They they, they need to change the the criteria as to what yeah. counts towards like your all your location. Yeah. Your photos backups, and your, like uh, your stuff from photos and all that stuff. Uh -huh. Sure, count all that. That's fine. Right. But if I just want to back up my iPhone yeah. so it that I can count. restore it when I have to, you know, reset it or something, just don't count that. Yes. That's not all my photos and all that stuff. That's, you know, but five gigs is not enough to do it. And, you know, right. yeah, it's a mess. So that's, uh, I'm predicting that, that they're going to up, finally upgrade that. So that would be great. Um, it would be great. But... Outside of the free tier, they're pretty price competitive. Right. Yes. They are. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's the reason I, I'm worried that they won't back out from it because, yeah, it's dirt cheap, technically. To, yeah. You know. yeah the pricing's good, but the free tier is terrible. <laughs> Especially since you don't back up your iPhones and iPads to Macs anymore. You yes. can, but that's not what people do, and that's not really the the expected behavior. Apple yeah. really expects everybody to back up to iCloud, right? And it's it, you just can't do it with the free with the five gigs. Yeah. So well, it's forced everyone to go to Google Photos, except for Roman, who prints them out. Uh, and that's his I, I use Google there. Photos also. <laughs> so I use everything available. Yeah. So. <laughs> Man, I had, you know, I had a Flickr account, which I've had since like 2006 and stuff, and have so many photos in there. I have to admit, I bit the bullet and did their $40 thing. So. Yeah, <laughs> I think about, I think about four or five years ago, it's like, if you use anything owned by Yahoo, get out. Yes. Just get out. It's all going to, it's all going to go away. It's all going to die. Yeah. I'll get around to it sometime, but yeah, I just finally just bit the bullet and spent all that money. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I just get I I like Roman. I have Google Photos as well. I have some Google storage. I set it to full size backups, and I back up there and iPhoto. I even save my photos to Amazon because it's it doesn't yeah. count towards your allocation if you have Amazon yeah. Prime. Yeah. So yeah, Prime yeah. Right. So. There is one last comment, uh, and this is from Carlos, who's asking about. Uh, a fingerprint reader under the screen. They're not going to do it. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think, think so. I think, it, I think a lot of people think it would be cool, but I don't think Apple sees any value in having two different ways and right. just confusing the market like that. And I think they're going to put all their eggs in. They have That's by idea. far the best facial recognition, and they're just going to put their all their eggs there. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Do you think they'll put Face ID on a Mac this year? Oh, I was going to say that earlier when we were talking about yes, Macs. Yes, I'm I do. Yes. I do think they would. They yeah, have to. I really hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least the at least the MacBook Pro. Like right. whatever yeah. they gotta do. Make the lid thicker. I don't care. Just because <laughs> Windows have had it for so long at this point that yeah. you know And it's great. Windows Hello works great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe it will. Yeah. Could could the face ID on a MacBook Pro be the kind of way that Apple gets out of the touch bar? Because I don't you think use the touch related. I don't think they're related. But do you use the touch bar for? Uh, do you, don't you use the touch bar for a Touch ID? I mean, it's no, got a little it's, thing to the side. Yeah, it's it's a, it's it's a different button. Yeah. It's a different button. Yeah. yeah. So but then on the on the air, but then they, they, they could say you don't need to use Touch ID anymore. You use Face ID. So we mm -hmm. remove the touch bar because you don't yeah. need. But well, they did that it's on the a reach, air. but I'm saying yeah. that's their way of getting out from under the touch bar. Like Jason said, it's on the air. Yeah. yeah, so they already did that on the air. There's no touch bar, but there is touch ID. Right, but they, uh, yeah, because the, but they won't put face ID on the air because of the cost. So it's <laughs> to keep the cost down. Do you know? What's, what's oh, I say? see. Like yeah. that as a way to keep the price up. <laughs> right. So. I don't know. I think they do need to get rid of the touch bar. The touch bar was a failed right. experiment. Yeah. But I can't yeah. see Apple getting rid of it because Apple doesn't step back like that. Unless they went to full touch screen. 
Which they won't do. The MacBook Air was a nice. Which they have to do. They have to do that. The whole keyboard is a touch bar. How do they? I, I saw, how do they not have a touch screen? It's crazy. Because they don't want to smudge up their beautiful screens. No. Yeah. I, everyone, yeah. everyone's screens are already smudged up <laughs> because anytime someone else tries to use it, they they expect that they can touch the screen. Yes. I yeah. mean, the whole the iPads are one giant smudge. So, well, see, yeah. that's the thing. When I was reviewing the new iPad Pro, you know, I got used to using it as my regular work device, and you all know, smudge and stuff. So when I went back to using my MacBook, <laughs> I did start trying to touch the screen again, and I was surprised that I started doing that. So, because yeah. it, it felt different. Yeah, I mean, I mean. It felt the same, excuse me, because you know I was using mainly using the iPad Pro, kind of like a like a MacBook, and when mm -hmm. I went over, yeah. So. Yeah, if they do that, I think it's going to be, you know, like they're trying to get uh, iOS software to be easy to make put on the Mac by bringing the the tools together. Right, right. Uh, and I think it's going to take another couple of years of that happening before they make a touchscreen. So if they do make a touchscreen Mac, I think it's not gonna be like this year, be 2020, maybe 2021, mm -hmm. when all these iOS developers are easily putting their apps on the Mac and they expect yeah, same functionality. all that sort of touch stuff to work. Mm -hmm. It'll make it easy anyways, for all, all the all the APIs and everybody things that everybody uses for touch on the Mac, I mean on the Mac, on iOS, that's how you'll do it on the Mac, and then that'll be their solution for developers. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, that just about does it for this week's episode of the Macworld Podcast, episode 634. That wraps it up for 2018. Yeah. For just us. a reminder so, one last time. We have. We are having a giveaway. Yes. It is the Bose Build headphones. It's mainly meant for kids. And, uh, you know, build uh, build your own pair of Bose headphones. And this is what it looks like when it's done. But it does not look like this in the package. You have to put all this together yourself. Yeah, 10 parts, yeah. 10 but pieces. Once again, this, uh, this giveaway starts on Friday, and you have two weeks. So You have two weeks to sign up. It'll yeah. be on our homepage. Uh, check it out. Enter. Uh, Yes. for a chance to win. We'll yeah. announce the winner on the podcast. Yeah, and I guess so. we are back when? So we are off ne the, for the next two weeks, just to let folks know. We will probably be, be back on January 9th. Yeah, I think that's so. when we have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the contest ends, the entry, the giveaway ends January 4th. Is that correct? I think it was the 4th, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. yes, that's correct. So. And then we announce it on the 9th. So. And we'll announce the winner on the 9th. So, yeah, so we won't have a podcast for the next couple of weeks. We're actually off for the, for the winter break. So, um, right. so, yeah, everybody enjoy your holiday. Hope everyone has a good holiday. Everyone here has a enjoy the holiday. <laughs> yeah. All, everyone uh, in the audience watching. Who doesn't like a little watching. vacation break? So, yeah. I am ready for it. Yeah. So. But, um, Jason's the only one getting a son, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, but anyways, I'd like to thank uh, Jason Cross on the remote. Thanks, Jason. Sure. Thanks to Leif. Thank you, guys. And to Dan. You're always welcome, Roman, and happy holidays. So, happy holidays, and thanks to you, the audience. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out our website for more information on the contest on the next podcast. And uh, the podcast is still all right. The website's still going on. Just, just, just to let you know. So this, we're still posting articles and stuff. We just the podcast is just taking a break for a couple of weeks. So, all right. Anyways, anyway, have a good holiday, everyone. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, whatever <laughs> uh, holiday you celebrate during this break. So, au revoir.